What's up, guys? This is Sim with Vengeance, and I'm back here with another Madden NFL 17 Detroit Lions franchise. And today, your 11 and 2 Detroit Lions are on the road again, taking on the 6 and 7 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They're my favorite team, but I can't go easy on them because that would be just that wouldn't be much fun, now would it? But if you guys are excited for today's video, make sure you guys drop a like, and if you're new to the channel at all, hit that subscribe button for more content like this. As we're headed to the playoffs, as I think with a win today, or unless we've already clinched the division, I'm sorry that I haven't made a Madden content in a while. Uh, I did make a video like a few days ago, but I did come under an illness. I still kind of have it, but it's, I'm getting better. Don't worry. I'm, I'm fine. I'm not dying. Uh, I'm just a little sick, but I did have to miss work, so that's kind of a bummer. <laughs> but uh, uh, you know what? Let's get on with this video. And just look at what we're going to get. Because, you know, we've had a lot of... We need to look at a good backup quarterback. And I think with Matthew Stafford on the back end of his career, who knows how long he's actually going to last. So we're, we're looking at quarterbacks there for a second to see what we can get for a, a good backup. So as you take a look here at the standings, actually we did clinch the division. So uh, right now our big focus is clinching home field advantage. Right now the Seattle Seahawks, though are trailing by only half a game. Uh, they are 10-2-1, uh, but the Steelers looking like they're going to win the North. Uh, sorry, Cleveland. Doesn't look like they're going to make the playoffs at, at this rate. Uh, Jaguars at 7-5-1 and one leading the AFC South. You take a look at the rest of the AFC South there. Uh, the Bills and Patriots tied at 7-6. and six. Uh, Who's going to win that? Who knows? Uh, the Chargers... At 11 and 2, they may clinch home field in the AFC. Who knows how that's going to play out? And uh, that'd be interesting to see in the AFC playoffs. In the NFC, though, you got the Detroit Lions leading the North at 11 and 2, clinching the a NFC North. Saints and Panthers, though, they are both tied at 9 and 4. Let's see who wins that division. In the East, you got the Cowboys at 8 and 5. They lead by only one game over the Redskins at 7 and 6. Giants and Eagles, well, they pretty much are out of it in the division, so they're not really relevant. Uh, so back to, and now on to the NFC West. The Seahawks have pretty much clinched the NFC West, uh, so it looks like they're going to make the playoffs as well. Now they're looking for home field advantage themselves. So we're looking to get home field advantage ourselves too. We don't want them to get home field advantage because then if we end up facing them in the playoffs, well, we don't want to go to Seattle because Lord knows that Seattle's not the place for me to go if if there happens to be a game there because we would just Seattle's just a hard place to play in uh, take a look at the injury report real quick before we get this game underway we still have Amir Abdullah out for another three weeks he's going to be ready by playoff time though don't worry he'll be fine uh, hopefully he'll be ready to go during playoffs Suwa Craven's out pretty much out for the year and you got the uh, Tampa Bay Buccaneers injury report and they got Alteron Werner out and Doug Martin so they're going to be out without some key players Doug Martin especially uh, not like Doug Martin's already facing this suspension and possibly getting removed from the team this offseason and the Bucks looking for a new running back but that's only because of the drugs uh, that he got caught with and his drug test getting, facing a four game suspension already served one game of it so he'll be missing like three games to start next season uh, so we'll see how that plays out but we're, on, we're right here at Raymond James Stadium here in Tampa Bay where they just held the national championship game, too. A little bit of a question of the day. I know this isn't related to the NFL, but were you happy with the college football national championship game result? I was cheering for Clemson, and all you Alabama haters, or Alabama haters are probably going to love me for that. All you Alabama fans are probably going to be like, gee, Sin, you're, what's wrong with you? Well, I'm more of a, a non-traditionalist. I like to uh, see teams that aren't really known for going to national championships or win them at least you know i like to see the i like to see the underdogs win i always cheer for the underdogs and uh you know it's nice to see clemson win especially since alabama won it last year you know uh not really all that surprised to see alabama even go to the national championship again uh but hey i'm just that's just me i have my opinions you guys have yours of course we're all open to have our own opinions and who we cheer for for a specific game uh in this one, though, it's kind of hard to cheer, cheer against my own team. I had to play my best against my favorite team, the Buccaneers. But here we are, and uh, let's see if, well, how we do. On third and four here, Winston in the shotgun. 
looking over the right side to Austin Safarian Jenkins. He actually does not play for the Buccaneers anymore since I think he got caught with a uh, drug charge or drug suspension. Uh, so he's no longer with the Buc the Bucks. They do have a good tight end though in Cameron Brait, so I do like that. He's a good tight end. But Winston dropping back again. Here comes Roundtree with the pressure. He gets it off, and it gets off to Mike Evans, but he cannot hold on. Usually Mike Evans is pretty sure-handed, but the hands of the defender got in there, and the Bucks are forced to punt. So here comes uh, Matthew Stafford. 32 touchdowns, 11 picks, 4,100 yards passing, having a stellar year. Hopefully he can make the Pro Bowl. We can hope to get a 5,000-yard season out of him. Who knows? Stafford looking rough side. It's caught by Jeremy Curley down to the 29-yard line for a 13-yard pickup. Stafford doing all right so far in that first throw. Second down and six. Stafford from, from the 34. He drops back to pass. Looks left side. It's caught by Curley. He makes a guy miss. He's make up. Oh, he fumbles, but he's out of bounds. So the ball falls out at the 31. Lucky break for us. Second down and five at the 25. Looks like we're running the same place because we are. But if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Jeremy Curley wide open again. Touchdown. Detroit Lions almost said Tampa Bay, but we're not. I, I'm not cheering for my own team. But touchdown Detroit. It's now 7-0 just like that. The offense is firing on all cylinders so far here on that first drive. So with 50 seconds left to go, Winston dropping back. Gets thrown down by Ezekiel Ansah for the sack. And the Bucks are forced to punt. So here comes that Lions offense once again. And hopefully we can put some more points up on the board as we begin the second quarter. Second and five. Looks like that same play again. But can they stop it? Well, no. Jeremy Curley wide open. Makes a guy miss. And he is off to the races. Touchdown, Detroit Lions. 14-0 as that's Jeremy Curley's second touchdown. And, wow, they cannot stop that corner route to save their lives. So first and 10 here for the Bucks. Can they actually get something going on this drive? Who knows? Winston, all on, or he's going to take the read option this time. He's actually going to break a few tackles. And he gets the first down. He's a big boy. Jameis is a big boy. He can run. And uh, he just got 13 yards on that one. So second and eight from the 40. Let's see if the uh, Lions can make a stop here. They do. It's a fumble. It's picked up by Zeke Yadza. He has a sack and a fumble recovery. What a day so far for Ziggy Yadza. So third and three from the 29. Stafford has some time. Looks right side. Caught by Eric Ebron. First down. Down to the 23-yard line. Stafford, eight of nine for 163 and two scores. Doing himself a good job so far at the 23 yard line. First and 10. Handing it off to Theo Riddick. Right side gets a first and more. Can he get in the end zone? No. Down at the five. 18 yard pickup on that play. And that sets it up for first and goal from the five. Can we finish off the drive? Sweep left to Theo Riddick once again. Stumbles over a defender, but he fights his way into the end zone. Quan Alexander tried to make the play, but he could not. And that is a Detroit Lion touchdown. It's now 21 to nothing. Tampa Bay is getting routed by the Detroit Lions right now. And it's, it's, not, it's not pretty right now. Second and five. Play action from Winston. Winston has some time. Lots of time. He throws it right side. It's going to be caught by Mike Evans. He's a Pro Bowl wide receiver. He almost made it to the All-Pro team. I think he should have, actually. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Everybody has their own. I think Mike Evans is one of the best in the game, and he just proved it this year, but he has himself a first down. Third down and seven here. Winston dropping back to pass. Look, he's over the middle. It's that man again, Mike Evans. And that's going to be an injury timeout. I think that's one of our other players that got hurt. Oh, Mike Evans actually got hurt. So now it's Philly Brown in instead of Mike Evans. So first and ten here for the Bucs. Safarian so Jenkins in motion. Hit it up. Play action. Winston dropping back over left side. It's caught by Emmanuel. And down to the 10 yard line. Well, six of nine is Winston for 87 yards. Having himself a pretty good game. Uh, but his team's down three scores. So they, they got a lot of work to do. A lot of work to do. Winston dropping back again. Has some time. Looks right side. Caught by Session. And he's down at the three. So Robert Aguayo, the second round draft pick kicker from Florida State. With two minutes to go in the half, the kick is up. And it's a piece of cake for Aguayo. So it's 21 3. So, I, I, if Aguayo missed that, I would have cut him. I'm dead serious. If Aguayo would have missed that, if I was the Bucks, I would have cut him. I would have taken that pay cut easily. But he made it, so he stays on the team. But Stafford completes another pass. 9 of 10 so far for 174. 
looking to put up another touchdown on uh, right before halftime. Let's see if they do it. A minute and a half to go here. Stafford looks right side, caught by Ebron. Ebron trying to break some tackles, gets the first down. Down inside Tampa territory. Second and six. Let's see if they continue to do it. Stafford looks right side again. It's caught by Ebron once again, breaking some tackles, taking people with him. That's what he does. He's a big boy. So third down and seven. Stafford dropping back. Looks right side. It's that man again. But he fumbles. But the ball up. It's picked up by Theo Riddick. Uh, but this kick is going to sail a little bit to the left. As Prater just got too much of it. Uh, too much left on it. But we do start with the ball in the second half. So that's a good sign that, you know, even though we messed up on the field goal, we still get to burn a little bit of clock here to begin the second half. And you know what? I'm okay with that. And you guys should be too. Because you know what? It's all about the victories here in Detroit. We don't care about how much we win by or, you know, uh, how many points we score or how many points we give up. All that, all that matters is the dub. All that matters in here in Detroit is the dub. But Winston is hurt. So here comes their backup. Some rookie quarterback uh, named Hanky. Not, I don't even know, man. This guy, I, I don't even know his name. But there's a flag down. Uh, looks like it's going to be against Tampa Bay. So we're going to have to decline this penalty because it's third down. So we're going to get the ball right back here. Let's see if we can burn a little bit more clock and put some more points up on that board uh, to try and put this game out of reach for good. Jeremy Curley. Obviously, he's been a fan favorite. And he gets another first down. 19 of 24 for 253 is Stafford. Oh, my Lord. And Jeremy Curley, seven catches for 165. He's putting up elite numbers. So this one is tipped out of Theo Riddick's hands, intercepted by Quan Alexander, and taken back for a touchdown. What in the world? That was Theo Riddick had the ball in his hands, slipped out. Quan Alexander could catch it, but Theo Riddick couldn't. I don't know. I don't understand. But this one is caught by Marvin Jones, and it's a first down. So that one, you can blame on Theo Riddick uh, because he did have his hand on the ball, but ultimately it ends up being on Stafford's statistics and ends up being his interception. So I, I couldn't tell you how I feel about that interception. It's just maybe it was a throw I shouldn't have made, but who knows? It was in Theo's hands, so I do trust Theo could catch it because he is a good receiving back, but not on that play apparently. But... The pressure's coming. Gerald McCoy makes a good hit on Matthew Stafford, and that's going to be a fourth down. So here come the Buccaneers. Here's Hinky in that offense of his. But, well, it used to be Winston's before he got injured. But Hinky dropping back to throw. Looks underneath to Safarian Jenkins. Can he get the first? Uh, ooh, yes, he can. First down. Down inside Detroit territory at the 48. Third and 12 from the 49 near the 50. All, uh, not alone in the shotgun, but he has a, a running back to the right side of him. Hinky dropping back. Looks left side. It's going to be caught by, I think that's set, uh, Gifford, uh, Griffin Hobbs on the, or James Manuel on that play, actually. Never mind. So third and 20 here. Another big hole for the Bucks. Hanky dropping back. Looks underneath. Caught by Session, but he steps out of bounds before he could go anywhere. So it's going to be a fourth down. They're going to kick a 56-yard field goal here from Robert Aguayo. The kick is up, and it's way off. No good. So we get out alive by only by giving up a missed field goal. So it's still 21-10. We would like to put this game out of reach, but who, who knows? Who knows what's going to happen at this point? Jeremy Curley, though, you know what he's going to do. He's going to get it first down. He always gets first down. That's what he does. He does. He's just the man. So third and six. Let's see if we can keep the drive alive on another first down. Stafford changing the play. Let's see what he sees on defense. Let's see what he sees on that defense. Stafford dropping back. Oh, he gets taken down for the sack. And that's Robert Ayers Jr. Robert Ayers Jr. on the sack. So we're going to go for it on fourth and 16 here. Because I don't trust Matt Prater from this range because of the wind. Uh, but Stafford gets the pressure. Robert Ayers Jr. in there again with another sack. Boy, we cannot win today here in the second half. We just can't. So here is Hinky dropping back. Here comes the pressure over the middle. It's caught by Philly Brown. Uh, but not enough for the first down. So they're going to end up settling for a field goal right here to make it 21-13. to 13. Robert Aguayo from 34 yards away. That's a piece of cake. So now it's 21-13. And we get the ball back. 
After the two-minute warning here, Tampa Bay's already wasted the timeout. Second and four handoff field. Riddick. Oh my goodness. He's gone. Nope. Goodbye. He's he's gone. He's gone. Big gaping hole for Theo Riddick. Touchdown, Detroit. That pretty much well, I wouldn't say it's your ball game, but you get the picture. There's still a couple more plays here that we have to do. It's just in our nature, right? Because the teams never give up. We don't give up. We play to the very last whistle. And Philly Brown, or not Philly Brown, but this other Brown guy, uh, his last name is Brown. He gets a big pickup right there. And they're going to run their huddle up off, the no huddle offense, the hurry up offense, I should say. And, uh, well, let's just say that we didn't do a very good job on defense in the last two minutes of this game. Because look at how wide open Philly Brown is. And that's a touchdown for Tampa Bay. And they didn't go for the two-point conversion, which kind of surprises me a little bit because I thought they would to make it a seven-point game. But I understand why they kicked the, the extra point. But with 10 seconds to go here, we decide to run the ball again. And look at Theo Riddick get all the space he wants and get in the end zone for another touchdown. So the final score in this one was 35-20. to 20. Theo Riddick had himself a heck of a fourth quarter, that's for sure. And he had, um, you know, one monster game. Uh, so Detroit is now 12-2. And we're still fighting for home field advantage in the NFC. Seattle pretty much has an easy way out of their schedule. They have a lot of cupcakes. So we have to do the same by winning all these games against some pretty good teams. Like, I think we have another division game against Green Bay. Or no, we don't have a division game against Green Bay. But we do play uh, Carolina. And Carolina does lead the N NFC South. We do have to play them. So that's going to be a pretty tough matchup as well. So anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you guys enjoyed, drop a like. And if you're new to the channel at all, hit that subscribe button down below. We're reaching 9,000 subscribers. And I could not thank you guys enough for all the support you guys give me on this channel. You guys make it all the worthwhile. But until next time, my name is Simmons Benjamin. You guys have been amazing as always. And I am out. Peace.